Hello, I'm JW, and this time it's more old items, and the item in question is this one. It's a Smith's Auto Set, which is basically a timer, so you can turn various things on and off when you're not around. So this is a Smith's Auto Set, 24-hour time switch, and it has this dreadful uh, slogan here. And then on the side here, there's this uh, picture of this typical uh, detached property, and apparently you can turn lights and things on when you're not around to fool burglars. That never worked. Of course, they can just ring the doorbell and run away, and if uh, no one arrives, well, there's nobody in, so they can just break in and steal all your stuff. And uh, all the sides, basically, it's just two sides there. They're both identical. So it's still in its original cardboard box. This was probably quite an expensive item when it was new. But uh, let's have a look and see what we've got inside. So we've got the thing itself, of course. And there's various other bits of paper there, which we'll have a look at first. So in the box then we've got the uh, two sets of instructions for a single program and double program, both of which are pretty much identical, except one does two programs, and of course the other one does one. Now the model we have here appears to be the double one, as we've got two indicators here, so uh, on and off, and then another on and off over there. So uh, the uh, double ones, of course, will be applicable, but realistically they're both going to be extremely similar. So it's a pretty straightforward device, and uh, of course there's all the uh, instructions there. We'll do a link to the uh, scan of these so you can actually read it rather than trying to read it on the video itself. And uh, there's no date on this particular product, which is uh, fairly typical for things uh, made in the past. They uh, didn't seem to like to tell you. And you've got your guarantee card there. And you can return it to that particular location if you wish to uh, send a postal order for 25 pence to cover part of the cost of handling, packing and return postage. But you do have to pay to send it to them as well. It's got these two little pieces here, which are fluorescent orange. And it's basically a reminder label so that uh, if the powers fail, then you'll have to reset the time yourself because, of course, this doesn't have any kind of battery backup or anything power gets off then the timer doesn't move. And there's two of those. And then you've also got this little card here which is the usual standard warning about the colours of the wires in the mains lead and it must be earthed and so on. So let's have a look at the uh, item itself. So it's a fairly chunky piece of equipment, a single uh, mains outlet on the front there. And then you've got this short flex here, it's probably sort of 12 inches long or so with a plug on the end. And of course the idea was you plug this into the wall outlet and then you can plug your appliance in here and set the time on the appropriate thing here, and it will switch on and off at the time you've chosen. On the back we've got a mounting bracket, so you can obviously remove this, screw that on the wall, and then hook the timer onto it. It appears that this has never been used because that piece of tape certainly looks to be pretty much original, so presumably someone just bought this and stuck it in a box, or maybe it came from a shop that uh, never actually sold it. And so this is a considerably uh, chunky device, considering the ones you get now are literally the smallest size possible. It's the outlet and a little tiny timer dial on the top. And then of course this wasn't made in China, and it was made to a decent specification. Now here's the uh, specification plate, and uh, so it's a bit difficult to see because it's uh, basically engraved, but as you can see it says made in Great Britain across the centre. And then we've got the operating voltages and uh, at the top there. Smith's Industries Limited, the lock and watch division. And that says, so what, Cricklewood, London, England. And it's 13 amp device, which of course it would be because the outlets are 13 amp rated. 200 to 250 volts at 50 cycles per second, or 50 hertz as it would be called now. And there's a few other sort of serial numbers stamped rather carelessly over the top. Now, in terms of setting the uh, thing itself, then this is just a protective cover. Your current time is actually at the top here, at that little mark uh, there, so that would basically be at 7.30 in the morning. And you've got day and night, obviously it's a 24 hour dial. And then for the times you want it to switch on and off, it's just these little markers which are permanently attached. They just basically bend downwards on a, it's just plastic, so you can uh, move those to whatever times you would like. And of course as they pass here, it will uh, switch on and off at the lever at the bottom. So just turn that around, then it will go to the off position. And then as the green one comes around, it will go back to the on position and move those just to uh, whatever times you would like. 
So let's see what's inside. So I've got a couple of screws on the back here, which should be pretty much all that holds it together. Now, as with most other of these, there's not going to be a huge amount in there. It's basically going to be a motor with some gearing arrangement, and of course uh, connected to a switch. So just the two screws that uh, hold the thing together. And let's see what we've got here. Flex is uh, rather short. And apparently the, manic, the uh, unit must be returned to the manufacturers for renewal of mains lead. So if your dog chews it off, well, you have to send it back to uh, the address given. But uh, of course, uh, that no longer exists, so we're not going to be doing that. So what we'll just do is to remove these uh, screws here. I don't think oh, actually that just pulls out, doesn't it? So uh, we don't have to unscrew it after all. We can just uh, remove the back as a complete item. So inside then we've got the uh, outlet socket here, which of course connects via the switched line going over to the timer. Neutral goes straight in, obviously links into the motor as well. Green earth wire there, which uh, goes over to the earth terminal. And again, that's also connected to the incoming earth line there. And it actually goes down to a uh, tab down at the bottom, which we'll uh, have a look at in a moment. And then we've also got a neon indicator here. And this appears to have gone rather black, so maybe it has actually been used after all, because that's certainly not the colour it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be pretty much uh, transparent, so the red neon glow can show through. So that's uh, probably a fairly well-used item. Now this socket here is actually made by MK, which is not desperately surprising, because uh, they were the sort of main manufacturers of this sort of item. So there we have it's an MK uh, panel mounting socket, also made in England. And again, 13 amps, 250 volts, so a decent quality piece there, and it's just screwed in at the top and the bottom. Now I think we'll take out the uh, clock part itself, so then we can see uh, actually the gearing and the thing may actually work. So we'll take out these screws, and then we should be able to lift out the whole assembly and hopefully see it actually working. remove the uh, MK socket as well, just so the two screws here on the front. So the front piece is just a single moulded piece of plastic. There does appear to be a bit of uh, dirt in there, so it may well have been used. And uh, so it's just got the holes for the socket, the uh, clock there. And nicely it's actually got these uh, threaded inserts here for the screws that go in. Not actually for the uh, clock mounting piece, but certainly you could remove the back to replace the lead or whatever as many times as you want as it's a brass insert rather than just screws uh, mashing into the plastic. And this little red uh, piece there for the neon light to shine through. Now it appears that the neon here is actually wired across the incoming supply, so this would be on all the time and not actually uh, switched via the piece here, because on the side here it's basically onto the brown wire, which goes to the uh, plug that comes in. And it's only this red one from this side, which is actually the switched output. Uh, the MK socket is totally uh, standard from that sort of era, so you've got your uh, three contacts there. The plate obviously forms the covering over the front, and then it's just a question of when you insert the earth pin there, it will move that down to reveal the other two socket holes at the bottom. So I think we'll just plug this in and uh, hopefully we can see if this neon still works, though given its uh, extreme blackness that seems unlikely. And we should also be able to see some or more of the uh, gears here moving. Now the motor for this is actually on the bottom, but uh, we'll have a look on this angle to start with and then see what else we can do after that. Okay, we can see the motor uh, actually revolving down there at the bottom. It's actually a uh, rotation like that as it's sort of mounted the spindle coming upwards. And the neon is actually on there, but it's uh, somewhat uh, darkened because of that uh, extreme blackness on the outside. But uh, as you see, the LED is actually glowing away in there. And in terms of the switching here, I mean, it's, it doesn't actually make a great deal of difference uh, which position it's in. It seems the neon remains on in either of the two positions. So we can see down in the bottom there the motor rotating and the short spindle that comes up there. And of course we've got other gearing in there which eventually comes through to this white piece here. And then that comes through to the front where you've got your essentially one revolution for every 24 hours 
on the front. So here's a view from the side. This is basically at the bottom here with the motor. And uh, you see it just goes through there with that rotating plate there. And you've got this slower moving piece here which comes through to the front. And then eventually by the gearing in the front there will come through to this final piece on the front there. So unfortunately you can't see this moving because of course uh, one per 24 hours is incredibly slow. But uh, of course that would uh, normally just rotate in this direction. And of course switch on and off via the plastic tabs here as they come round to the switch point here at the top. So the Smiths Auto Set, no date on it, but probably uh, 1970s. So some of the sort of styling and the uh, fact that the instruction things refer to certain items which don't exist anymore. But a uh, fairly uh, ordinary sort of device, but uh, of course massively uh, over-engineered by the standards of the stuff you can get today. But on the other hand, this item still works 40 years on, whereas all that junk you buy now for sort of uh, three for a pound or whatever won't even last beyond the end of this month. So until next time, thanks for watching.